Okay, so we're going to start week five and uh, part of uh, week five. Now we've come we've come this far. So we've started out with uh, the business plan, the marketing plan that's uh, part of the business plan. Then we've talked about the sales process, and that is part of what you're going to do after you uh, uh, penetrate the market plan and the people you get to work with one on one. We've discussed how that all fits into your um, KV Core, which is your database, plus it's your website. It's really the home uh, and the foundation of where all your marketing should be coming from. Okay, so it should all be tied together in there. Now, um, <clears throat> with all that, we've we've started to put the pieces together, as we said, for this uh, uh, sort of jigsaw puzzle. And now uh, we also want to reflect upon the first four weeks is uh, the first month of your 90 day uh, window and your 90 day pipeline. So you want to reflect upon what you've accomplished, <clears throat> what's what's uh, what's it look like, how much data have you collected or you know, what steps you've taken, do you have your sales process, uh, do you have these steps finished? So by now, you should be able to check off on the business plan, check off in the marketing plan, check off on the uh, beginning of, of, of building your pipeline, check off on the beginning of your sales process, because you should have had some experience now as well with the sales process. So as I said, it's not all it's not all sometimes a step by step by step. Sometimes the steps uh, kind of interact with each other and you have to uh, have a little flexibility. But today we're going to talk about, we're going to open up about referral of a lifetime. We're going to discuss more marketing, but we're going to discuss the difference between marketing and prospecting because there is a fine line. Uh, again, they're very close. They're very close, but I would think marketing for you to understand marketing is the identification of a marketplace. That's marketing. And then uh, prospecting, uh, which is a tool inside of marketing, is penetrating into that marketplace that you identify. And a lot of people like to call that a niche, you know, sometimes. But uh, in the beginning, before you can start working with a niche, you have to really kind of create the bigger pool. So think of it in terms of mining. If you were mining, and moving a huge amount of earth and dirt and then filtering in, you know, and then filtering again. So that coming down to the final end, uh, that last filtration would be giving you your, your finer metals or the things that you identified. But in the beginning, you'd have to like move a lot of earth first. So uh, that's the way it is with marketing and prospecting and then your sales process. Okay, so let's uh, let's get started today on what we're going to be talking about. Uh, also, just so you know, uh, as usual, when you see here your um, your final um, AOS uh, always on seminar. When you see this lesson this week, you'll uh, you'll have a button below. I'll be giving you the fourth um, <clears throat> the fourth lesson uh, it, from financial transformation, which, um, I think ties together well for learning different things to talk with your people about, as well as, uh, any documents that you'll see for this, you know, I'm going to give you a, uh, I'm going to give you a, uh, a document, a white paper, as it were on authority branding. Okay. So you're going to get that in here too. You'll see, it says authority branding, just click on that. You get that document and then you're going to have the link for, uh, for our um, our fourth lesson in financial transformation. Okay, so let's uh, let's start off today, and uh, for this week, let's discuss the referral of a lifetime, how it fits into uh, everything you're going to be doing. Okay, so all right. Now the idea here is this is really the way to build 100% referral practice. Not going to happen overnight. <clears throat> obviously it's a time uh, consuming uh, thing, but this is also the way to build your pipeline. And ultimately after two or three quarters or well within your, before the end of your first year done properly, you'll be able to create an entire 100% referral process. Okay. So let's start out with um, where we've, where we've been first and uh, where we're going. Let's make sure. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. So as I mentioned earlier, 
this has been our blueprint to date. And uh, let's look at your business sort of like a little foundational building a home, you know, building a structure. So um, <clears throat> we have the business plan, we got the marketing plan inside the business plan. And then we have the sales process, which is for, you know, one side is for buyers and the other side of your sales process is for listing. So uh, m uh, some of it has the same exact uh, process and some of it has some differentiations based on which you're working with. Now, the foundation of the idea here for referral of a lifetime, as you've gone through, is uh, authenticity. Are you being authentic? That means that there's no difference between you, the salesperson, and you, the everyday average human being. Okay, so that's the real you. And now the difference for you or the real important thing is, do you believe in your products, your services and your solutions? Do you have a, an incredibly ingrained belief in it so that anyone can sense it and feel it and know that you're not just in this for the money, you're not just in this for, for, some, um, for some opportunity to make life better, you're in this to help and become a true advocate for those you work with because you believe so much in what you do and you want to transfer that to them in the form of the uh, solutions. And the other important, important thing is, can you stay the course? Because uh, in any sales career, there are some ups and downs. There are some periods, uh, roller coaster periods, okay? They require persistence and resistance. When I say resistance, you have to resist the negative. You have to resist all the negative clouds and all the things that surround you that are telling you, you know, those little voices that are telling you this uh, is not going to work. This is not for me uh, for whatever reasons when you hit those obstacles. So you got to have the real you. You got to have a share belief, something strong, and then you need to persist. And that's your foundation. That's what you're building upon. That's what we talked about changing your mindset. Now, positioning is different and we've been talking about this for weeks. Positioning is how you differentiate yourself from the others that are in this career. How are you uniquely differentiated? Are you different? Number one, now I'm gonna send you this white paper for authority branding. We've had one um, uh, Wednesday uh, session on that, you know, talking about authority branding, but it's so important to differentiate yourself, okay? So client centric means that your best interest is my only concern. That means that you sitting across from me, I'm placing myself and riding on to your ego. I mean to be there because your best interest is my only concern. There's nothing in this about me, nothing. You eliminate yourself from this totally. And this way you're able to provide the best service, the most unique service, and also the most uh, uh, objective service because you're out of the picture. And you need to follow up. We discussed with Rainmakers the difference between them. The true difference between them is uh, they simply follow up. 85% um, or so of all sales are made after the fifth contact or the fifth, the fifth, uh, uh, the fifth part of the relationship, okay? You know, those contacts could be um, telephone, then they could be electronic, then it could be live in person, but usually it takes more than five and um, most salespeople only do three and that's the difference in the follow-up and Rainmakers follow up. Now, there are really four levels of, of positioning. One, you could be a generalist. We discussed this in our Wednesday sessions, but not everyone was there for it. So we'll go over it again. Uh, one is the generalist. The generalist is all things to all people and nothing to no one. So the generalist is the lowest compensated person uh, in that positioning. So generalists make the least amount of money. All right. Now, that's still a good living, you know, depending on the industry and career they're in. But being a generalist uh, is too often trying to please too many people and then trying to take anything that comes your way. Now, the specialist is a notch above and usually makes two, three, sometimes even four times more than a generalist. A specialist is someone who has found their niche, 
they're penetrating a specific market, they're providing a specific solution, and uh, basically they, they start to get referrals from others, uh, you know, because they are a specialist in their field and they're perceived as such. The authority is a much higher level of being a specialist. Now, the authority where the specialist uh, still has to go out and market and find people, the authority is in a position where people find them because they're considered to be an authority at what they do. They've created um, um, enough content and a following and people recognize them as an authority. This is how they start to have a total 100% referral business because they are an authority and authority usually makes three to four times more than a specialist. So there's a much uh, bigger difference in compensation when you develop the sense and the platform of an authority. The last one, which is not even listed here is celebrity. The reason I don't list that one is because celebrity um, uh, is something that uh, occurs uh, from, your, uh, from your deep authority, uh, from your ability to market yourself very heavily, uh, from your ability to put yourself in a very large platform. So some become celebrity. All right, by that time, celebrities are not working with clients anymore per se. Celebrities are working the general market from a very large 30,000 foot perspective because they're making their money by basically being a celebrity, okay? So there are people who reach that level in, in all industries and that's something that's a personal choice. Now we, we, we get to look uh, into the beginnings of referral of a lifetime. And hopefully everyone is uh, read through the book and reading through it a second and third time. But um, <clears throat> one of the first laws in there is that uh, we all know 250 people. Now those 250 people um, could be, uh, you know, close, close friends, family, um, uh, acquaintances, you know, just people we know of, but they know of us. So they all end up in our 250. Now, R250 needs to be in the KV core. You need to sit down and make your list and take the time. It takes a little bit of time, but you need to create your 250, okay? It's very important that you do that. You may not think you know 250 people, but you'll find that you probably know a lot more depending on how, uh, what, what age you are, what you've done previously in life, and where, you at in, uh, where you're at at this status in life. And you probably know a lot more than 250, but, but at least 250, okay? Everybody knows at least 250. But the real, the real opportunity exists in the 250 that they know. It's not so much the people you know. It is in the beginning because that's how you're going to get to the people they know. So you've got your 250, you got their 250. In a perfect world, that would mean that there's about 62,500 people. That'd be 250 times 250. But we know that because in the beginning of your 250, say 40, 50 of them, sometimes there's crossover. So you might know the same people they know. In fact, some of, some of their 250 could already be on your list. So I like to make it a little easier. I like to say there's about 100 pure uh, new people that you wouldn't know. And that makes that 37,500. So as you can see, that's about 37,500 people that you have the ability to tap into, okay? And your market doesn't just have to be local because of referrals and because of the ability to work with people out of state and because you may be in a state that's a little more attractive where people are moving into, you certainly wanna have people from out of state. So again, 37,500 people is a lifetime, truly. It's a lifetime of uh, business that you could possibly never get through in a lifetime. So for those who worry or are always uh, concerned and seeing the negative and everything, or they're seeing the dark cloud, look at it from changing your perspective. You've got a pool of 37,500 people you have yet to tap into if you go about this the right way. Okay, so it's, it's about building your pipeline. That's really what we wanna try to do. So you're gonna build that database, right? Now we talked about it, that it comes in 90 day segments. Now, when you get further into the book, you see where he breaks down the 250 into A, B, and C. We're gonna 
we're going to go over this more and more. So I'm not going to go in depth about the A, B, and C, but you know that what that means is that some, <clears throat> you know, some people you, you, you've got really close relationship with right now and you've had constant contact or ongoing contact with them. Okay. And then uh, Bs are people who you might have lost a little um, a bit of time and you may have to approach them a little differently. And Cs are people who you've really um, never had a great, great uh, closeness with, but you might have been close to them through an A or a B. And, but you know them, okay? And they, they know you. So um, that's your A, B and your Cs and you're gonna get them into your funnel. And as we say, everything in the funnel is going to, at some point in time, come out into the sales process. And that's your nurturing. So you're going to nurture long-term and short-term. That means daily. There's daily, uh, there's daily nurturing because there are ongoing upfront right now people to meet, people to talk to. There's monthly. Monthly is following up with some of those people you talk to. Okay. There's quarterly. So you're staying on the drip quarterly. And there's even annually so that you're making sure that you are touching base with people over a long period of time. Now, most importantly through this process is the right time, right place and right message. You know, we've discussed this about being in the right place at the right time. Now, you can't totally control that, okay? However, you can put the odds deeply in your favor by doing some uh, ongoing uh, committed, focused relationship building. And that's this whole idea, <clears throat> excuse me, of referral of a lifetime, you know, that you stay in touch. And it's important that you stay in touch with people because you don't know what the right time is. So really, what it breaks down to is where people are now, right, where, where it is right now, uh, where they are then, somewhere in the future and most importantly where are they when they need you so you have to be on their mind you have to be not at the forefront of their mind but you have to be in striking distance so when they need your services you will be the person they think of and if you do that ongoing drip and the nurturing you will land more than likely at the right time Okay, um, it's the um, the red Honda effect. You know, sometimes you uh, someone starts to talk to you about a red Honda. You see the red Honda. You have a lot of uh, discussion about it. Uh, you may have even gone to the car dealer and test drive one. And before you know it, for some reason, you go out in the highway and and uh, you continue to see red Hondas. Like, you know, days later, a month later. You run into a red Honda. So the um, the issue with the red Honda is because that has been focused into your mind. And because it's focused in your mind, you come up with this red Honda impact, okay? And that's what you get to see. So it's the same thing with being in the right place at the right time and having the right message. You need to, um, you need to have the right time, right message, and, um, and, and basically, um, be there when people need you. Okay. And, and being there when people need you is not an accident. It's by design. So that's because of your input. So you've got input, you put it in a database, you have an intro with that person. Uh, you continue to drip. That drip could be email, text, or even um, hard copy through the mail, uh, other ways that you drip on people. And um, then you're nurturing. And by nurturing, you got different events. You got birthdays, you got anniversaries, you got holidays. Um, you, you have reasons to provide content and you have reasons to stay connected. So really we, we're talking about a new paradigm here, a way of doing business uh, in, in a new paradigm, a, pa a pattern. The status quo was to, you know, basically follow the follower. And what I mean by that is that you know, whether you were the franchise or in this industry, or you were the big brokerage, or you were the national brokerage, they all had their own um, training, they all had their own concepts, they all had these kind of things they told you, but they were just basically nothing new, 
nothing really exotic and no way to really differentiate you because the organization doesn't really care about you being differentiated. They only care about the organization, which is fine. But at the same time, for you to build a practice or do something really for that organization, you need to um, have differentiated yourself first and then the organization comes second. So they battle for the puck where it is. Um, concept of, the, uh, of that is that for those who are sports fans, they know Wayne Gretzky. And one of the concepts that Gretzky always talked about, which made him such a great prolific player offensively, was unlike other players, Gretzky um, was thinking ahead of the play and he was on the way to where the puck was going to be. So he was always considering not where the puck is at this moment, where will the puck be, you know, several seconds from now. And he was moving himself into that position so that he would go where the puck will be. He wasn't battling for the puck where it is. And basically that's really a message to talk to you about being open-minded about being counterintuitive in your thought and about seeing the marketplace differently than everybody else sees it. Seeing the marketplace five minutes from now, as opposed to right now, seeing the marketplace a month from now, a year from now, that's the vision. So you want to go where the puck will be. All right. But in the status quo, people battle for the puck where it is. That's what they do. They don't see any clearer. Okay. They're influenced by home offices. Okay, that's, uh, you know, this is also something that we talk with insurance agents as well, but that would be the overall structure of the organization. They're influenced by what they put out. And again, they put out what's in the best interest of the company. They don't put out what's in the best interest of the salesperson or even the client. So um, you have to find ways to differentiate yourself. Sadly, in the status quo, people embrace mediocrity. It's uh, it's always transaction based. So it's like the next one, the next one, the next one. It's not about relationships. They avoid prospecting. They would rather spend money, throw money after it, let some marketing firm or some other people take over for them. And they would rather not have any control or any prospecting. Okay. And because of that, they pay too much for way too little. Now that's the status quo in this industry. Now, the new paradigm where we're getting your mindset and we're getting you to consider is the new paradigm is you're lead, leading the way. You're not following the follower. You're creating the pathway. You're different than everybody else. OK, you are the trailblazer and the pioneer. OK, they say there's three levels of that. There's the trailblazer, there's the pioneer, and then there is the end user. OK, the trailblazer is the one who builds roads and trails where there's nothing there at that point in time, nothing. The pioneer is one who builds up the infrastructure from the, from the infrastructure that's already begun, but it's still very early stage. And then the end user is the person who's based in that retail or that uh, scenario where it's almost all built out and they're enjoying the benefit of it, okay? The new paradigm is to go where the puck will be. We discussed that. You gotta have foresight, foresight forethought, and you've got to be ahead of everybody else. Thinking ahead puts you uniquely in front of everybody else, just simply because you think ahead, because trust me, 95% of the people will not do that. They just don't choose to do it. Okay. They, they even may be aware of it. Some are 80% of them or so are not even aware that that exists, but the other 15% or so just ignore it. So you want to be different. You want to go where the puck's going to be. You're going to be totally self-reliant. You're not relying on anybody else or anything else. You're self-reliant. It's all from your own planting, seeding, and it's from your own reaping because you're building it yourself. Now, that doesn't mean you're not leading and you're not bringing in other people and you're not building an organization. True, you're still self-reliant. You want to embrace greatness. Every day you want to consider what would greatness be? How can I start the steps today to affect greatness? What would that mean in my life? Where would I be? Instead of transaction-based dealings, you want to have relationship-based. Every, every transaction that you finish, which, you know, um, I mean, the word transaction is not the thing we're, we're differentiating here, okay? It's still a paper transaction or a, an, end, an end transaction. However, you want that to have a deeper 
uh, connection. You want that to be relationship based. The whole reason it started was because you built a relationship. The whole reason it ended and it ended in a financial commitment and it ended up in a, in a compensation role for you is because uh, basically you had a relationship. Okay, so that is the difference between transaction based relationship based. It's never just next because next means in a relationship, they're going to introduce you to other people. Okay, so that makes it a 100% referral based growth because you built it on relationships, you're self-reliant and you will find that people will, you won't have to ask for referrals. People will introduce you because of who you are, the authentic you, because of the service you provided, that's the advocate you, and because people know that you walked them through a time in life that helped them in one of the most important financial decisions they ever made, and you did it fully transparently and only with the concern for their best interest. And that's why you will be 100% referral based. So I want you to recognize these things that are important it is an open mind sees opportunities others miss. And it's so important that you have an open mind and that's the whole ability for you to uh, get into that, uh, that, that future forethought and that going where the puck is going to be happens with an open mind. Closed-minded people remain unaware. They don't know what they don't know. Okay, they just don't know. How could you know what you don't know? Because you're not looking for it, you're not open-minded to it, so you, you're never going to know. And worse, they don't know that they don't know. Okay? So not only don't they, don't they know what it is they don't know, they don't even know that they don't know something else because they're not open-minded, okay? And this little cartoon kind of shows that where people are just closed-minded, you know, where... This guy's going out to war. He's got his sword and uh, there's a salesman selling Gatling guns. And they're basically the king says, hey, tell him we ain't got time for any of his bright ideas. We got a battle on our hands. And meanwhile, there's a weapon there that could win the entire battle. But the closed minded thought process precludes even taking a look. So um, I want us to take a look at some of that and, and, and get in deeper to the referral of a lifetime. And those are really the principles that are going on. So the first step in this process is to get your, um, your list of 250, get it into the data format, get it into KV core, get it started so that you have your 250. From there, it's a matter of ABCing it and starting to reach out to those 250 and starting the process. And um, as you go on every single day, you will be collecting more and more. And, you know, I think you might want to consider collecting, you know, five new contacts a day if you can, um, you know, making five contacts as well, but also collecting five new contacts and just keep feeding that pipeline. You can't feed too much into that pipeline. I know successful, uh, very successful producers who have uh, five, 10, 15,000 uh, uh, contacts in their pipelines. So you can't have too many, okay? But you can already see that simply by starting at this 250 and digging deep with those people, you, you've got about 37,500 at a certain point in time that could be put into your pipeline. And this is a business that's all about pipeline building. You build the pipeline, you continue to nurture, building relationships from the pipeline and sales will naturally occur. You won't have to go looking for them. Sales will naturally occur because you've built the pipeline. The essence of the sale will come through the pipeline and that will lead to the sales process, which will end in finalized transactions. Okay. But those transactions are relationship based. They're not transactionally based. It's not just, ooh, here's another transaction. No, it's a, it's a relationship with a client and a person whose family and everything you've taken heart and soul into consideration 
and you believe that you can provide the best solution for them, knowing that you're different than the rest of the marketplace and knowing that you can bring these specifics to them to help them become aware, to help them understand the, uh, the best ways for them to finish this financial decision and then make this financial transaction. And that's your role as an advocate. So again, um, that's week five. And, um, you know, go back, make sure your business plan, make sure your marketing plan, get these all structured and pieced together, make sure you have a sales process, any of those things you need help on or you want more information, that's why I'm here. I will help you build specifically your own sales process. Remember, there's no one sales process for every sales professional, but every sales professional needs one sales process. So um, again, it's, I, I can't, I can't uh, repeat it enough. I can't speak high, you know, highly of it enough. You have to have that process, okay? And um, the rest is uh, naturally occurring, but uh, building out the pipeline. So as I said, when you look below the video here, you'll see the little um, links. Uh, you're gonna have one link for the authority branding, um, the authority branding document that explains some more about authority branding. And then you're going to also have the, um, the uh, lesson four for financial transformation. Again, I just want you to know financial transformation is something I did about two years ago. And um, it was a nice entree. It was a, it was a door opener into building financial concierges and helping people find uh, the right person to solve their financial situations. But it was, it was about the discussion of financial independence. And uh, not to belabor that point, but you're in an industry that helps create financial independence and uh, people need to understand uh, about financial independence because only 5% of the population becomes truly financially independent. We live in the richest nation in the world. And yet at the same time, we have the highest rate of financial illiteracy in the world. And because of that financial illiteracy, only 5% of uh, our population ever really truly becomes financially independent. And financial independence is different things to different people, but you know it's the ability to do what you want, uh, be who you want, go where you want, um, never have to be concerned about uh, money. You know where's the next dollar coming from? So that is the ability to be financially independent. Okay, uh, you can do more for others, you can do more for you and your family. Um, you have more opportunities to create. You have more opportunities to develop abundance. And um, yet only 5% of our population ever reaches that. So there's something wrong with that message right there. There's, there's something dramatically wrong and it's, it's really not that complex. It's a matter of financial literacy. Um, and <clears throat> in your work with people on real estate, this is the largest for most of the people you work with most. Um, can't say this about investors, but for most of the people you are dealing with the largest financial transaction and decision they're ever going to make. So it's imperative that you understand and can help them understand the best portions of this. You're not selling mortgages, but yet it's good to know the difference in an interest rate. It's good to know to show a person, you know, about what a monthly payment looks like for 15 years and what it looks like for 30 what that looks like with a half a point difference in uh, interest rate, how a half a point difference in interest rate could actually allow them to drop into a 15 year instead of a 30 year and what that would mean on the back end. All very important financial issues that you should be aware of, okay? And you should help counsel people on. You're not gonna get in the way of the mortgage broker or the person you pass them on to. I know to stay away from that, but on the way into that discussion, you know, let them know that uh, there are a lot of financial decisions in here, you know, and then you're, you're going to be able to help them with some of the closing, uh, the, the closing scenarios where, you know, certain things have to be there. You know, they certainly need to know about inspections and what that means to them and appraisals and what that means in the process, down payments, how that really works, what kind of extra dollars may be uh, needed at closing. Those are discussions, okay, on the way, you know, after people have made an offer and decided to go forward, 
All right. So for the buying side, th those are important things. Uh, anyway, again, this is week five. Um, I look forward to being with you for week six. And um, certainly let's get out there today and continue to uh, prospect, get out there, make five, 10 phone calls a day, um, find five new contacts to get into your database, work on five contacts from your 250, continue to nurture and, and, and expand and build out that pipeline, okay? All right, have a great day, good selling, and uh, look forward to seeing you in week six.